So, I'm not a girl's girl, um, and I have reasons for that because, like, y'all bitches are trifling. Like, I'm sorry, but if you've, if you've ever tried to make another female friend nowadays, tell me how that's going for you because I genuinely want to know. Like, girls nowadays are not nice, and they don't have your back. They're not your friends. Uh, maybe it's just you, because I have tried making female friends lately, and it's going great. Hey guys, I'm Hannah Cox with Base Politics, and you're watching my show, Histrionics, where every week I talk about women's issues from a sane, middle ground perspective. If you like this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also check out former videos in the series. This week, we're talking about Pick Me Girls and why they need to reform their ways. This episode is called Death to the Pick Me's. No, not because I wish these girls physical harm, but rather because I wish a speedy death to their toxic outlook and attitude on life. Let's begin. For the uninitiated, let's turn to dictionary.com to cover what exactly defines a pick-me girl. A pick-me girl is a woman who obsessively desires male approval and validation, often at the expense of other women. Despite the word girl being used, the term pick-me girl is almost always used to describe adult women. The term pit me girl is used to describe a woman who obviously and obsessively works to gain men's attention or acceptance. Typically, a pick me girl loves to talk about how she's not like other women, especially in ways considered typically feminine. A pick me girl may point out how she doesn't wear makeup or prefer sports to fashion. Groundbreaking. Pit me girl is often discussed as the female equivalent of a simp, a term often used to describe a man who obsessively seeks female attention. Like scent, pick me girl is almost always used as a negative term. In short, these women actively dislike other women and they often work to belittle them in order to gain the male validation and attention that they so desperately want. They see other women as competition at best and most of the time as an outright threat. And usually they end up being very passive aggressive towards other women in that pursuit. Right now, I'm pretty sure all of the women listening are conjuring up versions of the pick me girl they have run into throughout the course of their life. But for the men's who maybe still don't know quite what I'm talking about, let's roll a few examples. Hi, so nice to meet you. You have filler, right? Right, okay, yeah, I, I thought so. Where do you get your lashes done? Yeah, they're just really fluffy. Um, like a caterpillar almost. You're a natural blonde though, right? You're not, oh my god. Wow, that must be a lot of upkeep. Yeah, that would just take way too long. I mean, if I was you, I'd just be rocking the brunette at this point. I'm so low maintenance. I need you to teach me how to do such heavy makeup. No, I've never done it before. I like wear clear mascara. <laughs> yeah, I like don't wear any makeup at all. The highlighter on my nose. No, that's um, natural. It's oil on my skin. Yeah. I know. <gasps> oh my God. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. You look so dressed up. Yeah, no, I mean, I just didn't know that tonight was that big of a deal, but hey, I love the enthusiasm. Wait, let me see your nails. Wow, those must take so long. <laughs> I could never, I could never. You must care a lot. The clacking on the screen of those doesn't bother you? Huh, wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I could handle it, but brave. Wait, oh my God, I ran into your boyfriend at the grocery store the other day. Had no idea he was hot. Congrats. Good for you. Good for you. Wait, also your hair grew so fast. How did you do that? Extensions. Okay. <laughs> I could have sworn I saw a little weft popping out of there. <laughs> no, no, they look great. I can't even tell. Yeah, I mean, like, it just doesn't bother you when you're trying to, like, find your fingers through your hair or, like, your boyfriend or something like that. Like, when he's trying to, it doesn't bother you? Okay. Cool. Probably bothers him. Lindsay, why are you putting on makeup? Are you trying to impress the boys in the middle of my class? You guys see that? She's trying to impress you. So did any of you boys see me at the football game last night? I know you did because you were playing extra hard. Uh, 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 sit back down, girls. You're not allowed to use the bathroom. You had five minutes to go before my class started. So does anyone want to sit by Miss Jackson's desk today? 
Of course you do, Jessica. You're becoming a teacher's pet. How about we give someone like Aiden a chance instead? Why do you boys keep asking me to go to the bathroom? You don't have to ask for my permission. I'm not your mommy. Ashley, stop putting on lip gloss. It's not like anybody's gonna kiss you right now. You're at school. Any of you boys wanna taste this? It's vanilla cake flavor and I know that's your favorite. No, I don't mean kiss me. I mean like taste it like I'll put some on your lips. <laughs> that teacher one triggered me, y'all. I only went to public school for about two years at the end of high school. And the number of teachers I had who acted like that is just inexcusable. Like, why are you flirting with your students? <sighs> I think every woman has had to deal with this prototype from time to time. And if I'm being honest, we've also probably all been this prototype at least occasionally. And let's say you have been lucky enough to not run into a woman who behaves this way towards other women. You have still seen the effects of this mentality in the culture. I listened to a really good podcast episode a few months ago. It's called The Big Hit Show, and it has a few seasons now. But the first one deals with Twilight and the phenomenon around the movie franchise. Even though it was massively, ridiculously, commercially successful, it was still looked down upon and seen as something that was embarrassing to be shown out in public liking or appreciating. And actually, they trace this back through decades of pop culture, and they look at many of the largest commercial successes throughout history. Things like Elvis, the Beatles, the boy bands of the 1990s, Britney Spears, Justin Bieber. And the common thread throughout all of these is that females were the original fan base. Females got really excited about these pieces of art or cultural contributions. And because of that, they usually didn't really get respect right away, even though they were unquestionably all really great in their own right and very talented. And even though as they progressed in their careers, the culture at large came to appreciate them. But oftentimes when something is attributed to being inherently female or liked by females, it's looked down upon. Most recently, we've seen this with the Taylor Swift phenomenon, where she is undoubtedly the biggest female star on the planet and means a lot to millions and millions of women who identify with her lyrics. On top of being a humongous commercial success who literally has the ability to move the economy with her tour, she also seems to be a very good person. She's very involved in charity. She conducts herself with grace. She's never seen acting out or being a mess. She's a very smart and savvy businesswoman who has far surpassed most artists throughout history and their ability to stay relevant and make money with their craft. And yet a not insignificant number of men are provoked to outrage at just the sight of her on their TVs. They put down her talent. They say she can't sing that good. She's not that great of an artist. And listen, one's taste in music is absolutely subjective, but I don't have to like the Beatles to understand why so many people think that they were great. But because she's popular with women and because so many men don't get why she's popular with women, they write off her talent and demean her and again, can't even stand the sight of her at a football game. I guess I could make an entire video about how pop culture that women like is often demeaned. Maybe I'll do that some other time. But back to the original subject of Pick Me Girls. Women are in competition with one another on multiple fronts, the same as men are. We're competing for the best men on the market. Yes, of course. But it goes a lot deeper than that. Women are also competing for what feels like society's limited attention span for women. They're competing for jobs and industries where women are still the minority. They're competing for leadership roles and the chance to advance. And it often feels like only one or two women will get picked to keep moving up. And unfortunately, the message that women are getting from society is that they have a very short window for all of that. Unlike men, women are mostly treated like they have an expiration date. They're told if they're not married by a certain age, they're no longer attractive. They're told if they're not mothers by a certain age, their life has no meaning. They get the idea that if they don't get to where they need to be in their career before they have kids, their chances will be shot. Society tells us our value is inherently attached to our looks. So women spend a whole lot of money trying to hang on to their youth because they know that as their looks decrease, society will see them as less valuable, not only on the dating market, but in the job market as well. For women in media, like myself, very few are capable of staying relevant after the age of 50. Have you noticed that? All in all, women hear the message loud and clear that there's only enough space for so many of us. Some of these messages are based in reality. You do have to have kids by a certain age if you want to reproduce, although that window is so much longer than alt-right men try to convince people of. And if they freeze their eggs or have the means, they can have kids whenever they want. It's also true that many women have to take time away from the workforce or choose to after they have kids, and that hurts their ability to move up in their careers. There's a trade-off involved there. And I think that makes a lot of women feel desperate, to be honest. Like it literally puts them in fight or flight mode. 
I know in my own career, I've experienced this quite a bit. I've worked in two very competitive sought after fields, both of which do not have as many women as men working within them, and both of which certainly have a smaller number of women leading within them. In the music industry, which was my first career, this led to the vast majority of women who were older than me being outright mean. They were very clearly threatened by any younger woman who was coming up the chain. They did absolutely nothing to help mentor us or guide us or or in any way do anything that might help us in our own path. They were often outright rude to me. They behaved very territorially and it sucked. I think I had one or two female mentors in the music industry who were actually good to me, tried to help mold me and worked to help me get a foot in the door. And I watched my male counterparts going through many of the same programs and internships I went through during that time and being treated radically differently by the men who were in that industry. Now, I want to be clear, I did have a lot of men who really did take time to mentor me and to try to give me a shot. And that meant the world to me. I also had some older men that tried to sleep with me. But it mattered to me that women didn't because women's experiences in jobs and industries is just different. And I really would have valued that kind of counseling and wisdom from women as well as men. It did influence me though. And I made up my mind shortly after I got out of college that I would never be that kind of woman. I decided right then and there that I was going to be a girl's girl in the workforce, that I was going to work to uplift other women, to champion them, and that I was not going to see them as a threat. Because there's no reason to think about other women that way. They're actually far more likely to help you advance if you take the time to foster those kinds of relationships than they are to try to outcompete you. And I keep that posture to this day. Anytime I've been supervising hiring decisions or internships, anytime I have the chance to give somebody else a shot, I have prioritized ensuring that there were women in those groups. Because I'm not scared of somebody else taking my place. I have a unique voice. I have something unique to offer. And another woman succeeding and thriving, even if it's in a similar career as mine, does not take away from that. But for women who are trapped in this pick-me mentality, it's important to remember something. And that's it. Hurt people hurt people. It's an oversimplified phrase, I know, but it is true. Whenever you encounter somebody who acts nasty, who's mean, who's belittling you, it has very little to do with you and everything to do with them. All it does is tell me is that that person is deeply insecure and wounded inside. And I do get why, because the messages women are getting in society are not good. Let's talk a little bit about where the pick me mentality stems from. Okay, I'm going to try to explain the difference between the cool girl and the pick me girl and how that eventually kind of also spawned the girl's girl and why I think the pick me girl is more problematic than the cool girl. In 2012, Gillian Flynn releases the book Gone Girl, which has this epic cool girl monologue in it, which you can listen to in the reply. This is 2012. This is 10 years ago. And at the time, like this was like waking people out of their comas. The most important and probably overlooked point of the cool girl monologue is that all women were expected to be the cool girl. She literally says, if you weren't the cool girl, people assumed something was wrong with you. In 2012, that was fact. And it was kind of subconscious. There's all these movies coming out where the ideal girl was basically a dude in a hot girl's body who would like ride her motorcycle into the bar and then be like hey i'm gonna beat you at darts and then chug a beer and then eat a hamburger faster than you and then that's the ideal girl fast forward to now and it's like okay there's these girls being called out left and right for being pick me girl it makes it seem like there's a specific type of person that's a pick me girl and it aims to like really isolate like specific people old girl monologue critiqued the way that women were expected to behave and the pick me girl movement seems to like target the people who like didn't come out of their coma from reading Gone Girl. And I understand like the younger generations may be coming in now. I'm like a zillennial cusper, so I'm trying to walk both sides here. You come into society now, I understand why you identify some girls as pick me's and some girls as not, and you are, can easily like cancel these like millennial pick me girls. But the context is that. In 2012, we all came up, like I was in high school, we all came up in this like, you have to pretend like you don't care, you can't tell me you like them, all you want is sex, like, you are the cool girl. Not true now, but back then, it was kind of like survival instinct. And I'm using the word survival very loosely, obviously. That was literally the recipe to get a boyfriend or to like be seen as like, acceptable by men. And I know we're, we're like over that now, but we weren't over it then. This is the only way, like it was the thing. Obviously this demonstrates that society is moving in a good direction, but I still have empathy for these like pick me girls who like their whole life were like trained to operate in this one singular way and now are trying to like 
retrain themselves to be what I now call the girl's girl. And I I love that she referenced the cool girl monologue because this is something that comes up in female discourse a lot. And I think it's actually important. She's absolutely right that for most of my childhood, pop culture was pushing this idea that women needed to be super chill, super cool, like what boys like. They should never be emotional. They should never like feminine things. That's stupid because girls are dumb. And if you act and think like a girl, men won't like you. Do men like women? I want to read you this epic monologue from Gone Girl that she mentions in that reel. This is read by the character of Amy, who is the main character of the story. If you're not up to speed, I can't help you. This book's been out for like a decade. Go read it. It's awesome. She says, men always say that as a defining compliment, don't they? She's a cool girl. Being the cool girl means I am a hot, brilliant, funny woman who adores football, poker, dirty jokes, and burping who plays video games, drinks cheap beer, loves threesomes and anal sex, and jams hot dogs and hamburgers into her mouth like she's hosting the world's biggest culinary gangbang while somehow maintaining a size two. Because cool girls are above all hot. Hot and understanding. Cool girls never get angry. They only smile in a chagrined, loving manner and let their men do whatever they want. Go ahead, shit on me. I don't mind. I'm the cool girl. And actually think this girl exists. Maybe they're fooled because so many women are willing to pretend to be this girl. For a long time, cool girl offended me. I used to see men, friends, coworkers, strangers, giddy over these awful pretender women. And I'd want to sit these men down and calmly say, you were not dating a woman. You were dating a woman who has watched too many movies written by socially awkward men who'd like to believe that this kind of woman exists and might kiss them. I'd want to grab the poor guy by his lapels or messenger bag and say, the bitch doesn't really love chili dogs that much. No one loves chili dogs that much. And the cool girls are even more pathetic. They're not even pretending to be the woman they want to be. They're pretending to be the woman a man wants them to be. Oh, and if you're not a cool girl, I beg you not to believe that your man doesn't want the cool girl. It may be a slightly different version. Maybe he's a vegetarian, so Cool Girl loves Satan and is great with dogs. Or maybe he's a hipster artist, so Cool Girl is a tattooed, bespeckled nerd who loves comics. These are variations to the window dressing, but believe me, he wants Cool Girl, who is basically the girl who likes every effing thing he likes and doesn't ever complain. How do you know you're not Cool Girl? Because he says things like, I like strong women. If he says that to you, he will at some point F somebody else. Because I like strong women is code for I hate strong women. That monologue brings the heat every time and it is spot on correct. I, like many women, am a recovering cool girl. I read Gone with the Wind as a kid in which it says almost immediately in the opening that Scarlett O'Hare was beautiful and did not like other women. And because I somehow thought Scarlett was a protagonist versus an anti-hero, I wanted to be like her. I wanted all the boys to like me, and I got it in my head that if I acted like Scarlett, they would. And the problem here is that it actually pretty much works. Men do like this caricature of a woman. The cool girl, the chill girl, the low-maintenance girl, the girl doesn't wear that much makeup. It's all code for I want a woman I don't have to do that much to obtain or keep. I am a dude on a dating app. Do you like these pictures of me? I want a girl who's hot and cool, but she can't take herself too seriously. She should have a job and be super chill and surely be shorter than me. But the number one and most important thing is that she doesn't take herself too seriously. It's also code for I might like men, because why do you want your female love interest to have the exact same interests as you or to conduct themselves like a man? Like some questions need to be asked. But either way, me and many other girls got it in our heads in our adolescence that we needed to be this kind of girl in order to succeed with men. But fortunately for me and for many other women, by the time my brain fully formed at age 25, I realized that was stupid and that I didn't want to be with any man who saw women like this or who wanted a woman like that. If a man's not into me for my intellect, for my values, for my principles, for my character, and if he can't appreciate my interests just as I will try to appreciate his, then I'm not interested in that relationship. And other women shouldn't be either. Why should women have to be cool? Instead, they should be asking themselves, what is the man in your life doing to create an environment where you can chill? Because ultimately, a not insignificant number of women are still getting absolutely walked all over by the men in their lives. They're being cheated on by them, disrespected by them, ignored by them. 
They're still doing the bulk of the labor in the house when it comes to child rearing and the emotional labor in the relationship. And while we have made incredible gains to actually have equality under the law, and we should celebrate that, there is still a lot women have to overcome in society. We do often still have to work harder to get noticed in our jobs or get ahead. If women choose to have kids, they still have unique challenges to show up in the workplace and be a good mother. And society definitely places different expectations on women in those roles than it does on men. And there is still a lot of sexist sentimentality that we have to face in society. It's a lot to contend with. And believe me, most women are not thriving on the inside right now. They're doing better than men on many fronts when it comes to actually graduating college, buying homes, financial attainment is, is going better for them in many ways. And they also do tend to have a more robust community and support system around them compared to men who are really struggling in that aspect. But there are many other fronts that are unique to women where we just feel beat down. I guess this is going to be a monologue heavy episode, but this makes me think of the Barbie monologue, which I'll refer back to because I went to see Barbie not being that excited for it. Honestly, I wasn't big on Barbie as a kid. And I think I was tapping into that whole cultural thing where it was like something that was heavily attributed to women, heavily marketed towards women. And I felt myself recoiling from it and looking down on it. But I went to see it with a friend and I was shocked beyond the pale to find myself crying when America Ferrera delivered this monologue. She says, it's literally impossible to be a woman. You are so beautiful and so smart and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough. Like we have to always be extraordinary, but somehow we're always doing it wrong. You have to be thin, but not too thin. And you can never say you want to be thin. You have to say you want to be healthy, but also you have to be thin. You have to have money, but you can't ask for money because that's crass. You have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. You have to lead, but you can't squash other people's ideas. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. You have to be a career woman, but also be looking out for other people. You have to answer for men's bad behavior, which is insane. But if you point that out, you're accused of complaining. You're supposed to stay pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be a part of the sisterhood. But always stand out and always be grateful, but never forget that the system is rigged. So find a way to acknowledge that, but also always be grateful. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. It's too hard. It's too contradictory. And nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. And it turns out, in fact, that not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. I'm just so tired of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us. And if all of that is also true for a doll just representing women, then I don't even know. So while I can't stand pick me behavior and I think it is demeaning towards other women, I have to have a little compassion here. I think the best thing we can do with people who have this attitude is not bully them, but help them understand where it's stemming from. This is what life could be like if you were honest with the pick me girl. Oh, seriously, guys, she takes so long to get ready. I just put on mascara and sat there and waited forever. Well, that's a pretty weird thing to say, but it's okay because I know you're just projecting your insecurities on me. You feel the need to prove that my beauty is an illusion created by makeup because having anyone who's attractive near you threatens the only thing that you've been given praise and validation for your entire life, which is your appearance. But at the same time, you're terrified of being labeled vain or basic or high maintenance because deep down you know that you have more to offer than your looks and you want someone to love you and see you for something more on a deeper level. So you're constantly being threatened by people who are both attractive because that's what you know you're given praise for and people who are being true to themselves because that's what you wish you were getting praise for. It's okay, I'm not mad at you, I just really wish you would heal. Clearly, people who are pick me girls are deeply insecure and they're deeply threatened by other women and need to feel superior to them. But I also think this mentality stems from an abject fear of being associated with women and the weaknesses that are attributed to them. In short, it comes down to sexism, actually, because there is still a lot of sexism out in society. A lot of women would like to simply cut that cord and not be associated with that reality. In fact, it seems a good number of them would rather be liked by and protected by people who perpetrate these kinds of belief systems than actually stand up to them. Because when you kiss up to men who hold these views on women, that's what you're doing. Men who actually like women who see them as equals do not need a woman to contort themselves in this manner. They don't need this false pretense of a cool girl. They don't need a woman who's super low maintenance or one of the guys because they like women. 
They can appreciate female attributes and interest and the things that are unique about womanhood. And to be clear, doing things like making the show will make you very unpopular with that kind of man. And that kind of man is unfortunately far too prevalent on the right. Anytime I've said anything remotely pro-woman on the right, I get labeled a feminist. And that used to actually scare me in my career. I thought it was something that could really hold me back. Feminism definitionally is just fighting for the right and prosperity of both genders. It, it means you believe in equality. It shouldn't be a dirty word. Now, feminism has absolutely been bastardized by far left extremists, which I will talk about on this show as well. And a lot of that has given it a dirty name because they've taken it far past equality and are now looking to actively disadvantage men. I don't hate men. I love men. I have many great men in my life. But men who have a problem with people saying pro-feminism things, and especially men who get triggered the minute you call out bad behavior from men, are not good men. And there are far too many of them in the comment section of this show. In fact, I've thought about starting a little thing at the end of each episode where I read out some of the most ridiculous comments from these types of men. Let me know if that's something you want to see because they need to be called out. While pick are usually trying to avoid condemnation from these kinds of men, what they do in the process is actually embolden them and let them get away with bad behavior. I love this article I found on Medium. It's by Petrina Ferguson, and it has kind of a Christian bent to it. But she says, pick me types of women are hurting themselves and other women. Here is why. She goes on to note a list of things, one of which is pick me women support and encourage the hostility of certain men towards women in general. They help reinforce those men's contempt of women. Another one says, pick me women often have low standards, few expectations for, and high tolerance for men misbehaving in general. Free market still works when it comes to dating, guys. There should be absolutely no demand for men who act this way. That would actually force them to change so women would have a better source of supply of good men. She goes on to say, pick me women are desperate, which means they're very vulnerable. Pick me women reinforce and reward bad behaviors in men. They tend to attract predators who capitalize on their desperation. Pick me women don't know their worth. And because of pick me women, the deficit that exists when it comes to men of integrity increases. After all, if a man lacks integrity, why would he go after the woman who has integrity and will hold him accountable? For immature men, pick me type women are a lot easier and more convenient to deal with. Despite the animosity these types of women have for other women, and despite the troubles that they cause for both themselves and other women, these women need compassion and prayer. And I do agree with her. They need compassion and they need help. It is so much better to be a girl's girl throughout your life. Research shows that women need at least three close friends. And yes, those close friends can absolutely be men. Two of my best and longest friendships are with men. Shout out Drew and Andy. Love you guys. But that being said, there are some things women go through that men simply don't understand. Most women also say they wish they saw their friends more. And I think it's important to remember, you become like the five people that you were around the most. So if you don't have other inspiring, successful women around you, you're going to be held back in life. Yes, you should absolutely be picky on the character of people you choose to befriend, whether they be male or female. But if you're exempting a whole half of the population because of their gender, you're going to be missing some things. Also, it's important to remember that men are probably going to die before you. Like legitimately, all your guy friends, your husband, they'll probably die before you. And who are you going to be left with then? Not only that, but women are the caretakers in society. They are far more likely to come take care of you when you're sick, to bring you things that you need. Trust me when I say you want women in your corner. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this week. Drop me a comment and a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share the show if you found it helpful. Also, a little housekeeping. There will be no episode of Histrionics next week because I am heading down to the border to check out the immigration situation for myself. I'll be bringing you some content from that to my YouTube channel. So stay tuned and I'll see you in two weeks. If you enjoyed this episode, you'll definitely like more from my series Histrionics here. And you can watch my weekly show, The Base Politics Podcast here.